Last week, I shared how I approached my personal New Year goals or habit building process. And this week, I want to share how we talk to our girls about New Year's resolutions. Spoiler alert, we've put our own twist on it. Hi, I'm Allison Edgety, a pediatric sleep and wellness coach and a mom of two. I love to help parents find solutions. This is How Long Till Bedtime. One thing I've realized since having children and then starting my own business is that I want my kids to become dreamers. I want them to dream big. I want them to see dreams come true I want them to learn how to be resilient and not give up on their dreams, even as they face disappointment. I want them to learn and realize that it is totally okay to change or shift a dream as they grow or change as people, or if circumstances come up that were out of their control. With all of that in mind, Last year, during the first week of January, or maybe the second, because we had that crazy snowstorm and we were home, so maybe it was the second week of January, January, we sat at the table and we wrote our family hopes and dreams for 2022. We worked on it together. This was our spin on New Year's resolutions for our kids, and this was a way that I wanted to encourage them to dream. The girls had lots of ideas. Some were realistic and some not so much. We talked about how it's important to dream and how as we grow and change, our dreams can grow and change too. We talked about how sometimes disappointment or something not so great can lead to a dream needing to change or result in a new dream. I shared with them how I used to dream about becoming a veterinarian all throughout my childhood but how that dream ultimately needed to change after I got a very poor grade in chemistry in college. And ultimately, it led to good things. And it was someone I met through that journey and wanting to become a veterinarian who helped shift me to my next path. So it's like it was all meant to be. I also shared how Addison's sleep struggles inspired my dream of helping other parents with their children's sleep. So that was unexpected, and it kind of inspired and altered a dream I had of someday having my own business. I shared how after I graduated and left Charlottesville and moved to Chicago, I found myself dreaming of moving back, and we talked through how Mike and I made that dream happen. I will say that they really seemed to enjoy this exercise of dreaming and hearing our stories, and they had a lot of fun with it. They talked about short-term dreams and long-term dreams, what were things that we could do in the next year versus like what might be bigger picture. It might take a while for us to accomplish them. It was really cute. Throughout the year, we sometimes referred back to things from our dream sheet, but I didn't actually ever sit them back down and review it with them. I was just trying to plant a seed. The goal of this initial exercise was to just try to get them thinking about dreaming in general and to make them aware of their dreams. So as we wrap up this year, I want to tell you that I think it worked. I think this whole process of getting them dreaming is working. We're moving in the right direction. And I'm not going to share their specific list. That feels like a little bit of invasion of privacy, But I want to share a few that jump out to me and that they talk about, and I think they would very actively come on here and share with all of you. Something that we had stopped as the pandemic hit were fun family adventures. Prior to the pandemic, we had started to take short weekend trips for each of the girls' birthdays rather than having birthday parties. And we also did other fun trips throughout the year, and we were very intentional about calling them family adventures. They said that they were very eager to get back to this in 2022, which brought me joy because we were intentional about starting them. We were sad to see them come to an end, and I love that the girls were seeking them out. 
And so we did do just that. We went on a few family adventures and the girls often brought up while we were on these trips that this was a family adventure and that this is something that is important to them. So that was something they had on their list or we had on our list. We all agreed on it that we made happen and they're still actively seeking out lots of family adventures and they will see commercials or hear about a place or learn about a place in school and come home and say, we should add it to our list for family adventures. So we actively talk about places we might consider going. So I feel like that's great. It's really fueled their sense of wanting to go out and explore, which is a gift that we wanted to give our kids. Another item that we had on the list was to read lots of books and become strong readers. In a future episode, I'm going to share Addison's journey to learn to read because it was a very challenging couple of years and it resulted in her saying she hated reading for a very long time, but that literally is going to need a whole episode. But that was hard for me because I loved to read as a child. So it was a pain point and I was really becoming nervous that we weren't going to be able to turn around on that. And then for Ainsley, her journey to learn to read was much smoother, but I think the angst of Addison's reading journey got in her head a little bit, and she was not actively saying that she enjoyed reading or really allowing herself to get sucked into a good book. Well, I am pleased to report that by talking about this and kind of making it one of our dreams, one that we spent a fair amount of time discussing on that January day at the dinner table, both girls finished school last year as top readers in their class. And they took a lot of pride in that. And they both found books that they were excited about and wanted to read. And their narrative around reading started to change. They started to refer to themselves as good readers. And the reality is they're fantastic readers. And That was a nice shift to see. And that language about hating to read, particularly for Addison, started to fade away. Now, don't get me wrong. This does not mean that there are not days when I really need to hound both of them to get their daily reading done for school. But they both now refer to themselves as good readers, and they do want to share qualities of books or storylines of books that they're enjoying. In fact, yesterday as we were sitting in the car waiting for soccer practice to start, Ainsley just launched into, let me tell you what's happening in the Narnia book. And I could not follow. There was a lot, even though I read that book as a kid, there was so much happening, but every little detail and then this person and this person, and she's just so into it. So I love, love, love to see that. And I do the same thing with them. So this is an example. I talk about this a lot with sleep. We want to model what we want to see our kids do. This is one another one of the reasons I want to get back into my reading habit. I need to model for them that reading should be a daily habit and something that we can find joy in. So I did, particularly over the summer when I really wanted to help them get stay engaged in reading, I did model talking to them about what I was reading. So if I was reading a book that I really enjoyed... They were always asking me in the morning, what happened in your book last night? And I would tell them. Now, there's a previous episode. I can't remember what episode it was, but it was related. One of the episodes I did related to fears where I talked about how one day I told Addison too much and I triggered a nighttime fear related to one of the books I read. So I'm more thoughtful now about what I share when it comes to book details. But that was something that I find myself thinking, oh, it worked. I modeled the behavior I wanted to see, and I'm starting to see it reflected back to me from the kids as it relates to reading. So that was one of the things that we had put as one of our kind of hopes and dreams for 2022 was that we would read more books and we would read great books. And I feel like we have done pretty well there. So a little bit of more individual notes for each of the girls. Ainsley has said for a long time that she has a dream of going to Paris, and she really wanted me to write it down. And this is a fun one for our family kind of dream page, because Mike and I have always wanted to go to Paris. And of course, Addison is up for any adventure. Well, at the end of last year, Ainsley's art teacher sent home her art portfolio. So we did this in January, and now fast forward to June. And there was a picture 
that she had a painting that Ainsley had made inside this portfolio that was a painting of the Eiffel Tower with a little girl flying over the Eiffel Tower. And then there's a tag at the bottom and it says an artist description. And that description said, this is a painting showing me dreaming of going to Paris. This painting made me so happy. It is now framed and in our family room because I thought, wow, she's really visualizing bringing this to life. And it really prompted me to think, it's time to make this happen. I am ready to make this dream come true. This is a big dream. This is a huge dream. And I kind of want to use it to inspire her that we can dream and visualize great things and they can happen. So Mike and I started planning and budgeting, thinking, okay, we're going to get this 2023 Paris trip going. And it's now booked, you guys. So it's booked. Both girls know about it. They're thrilled. But Ainsley brings it up about once a week. So for whatever reason, this is just incredibly, incredibly important to her. And she talks about places she wants to see, food she wants to eat, she wants to try escargot. And she asks about what we'll be doing there. And she's very eager to learn about things as I'm looking into planning this trip. So she really constantly talks about this is her dream to go to Paris and that it's coming true. So beyond being personally thrilled to go somewhere that Mike and I have always wanted to go and knowing that our girls are going to get this really wonderful experience, it's kind of magical to help make this dream come true for the girls, particularly for Ainsley. So my cute story about Addison is that she said she's dreaming about being an engineer who's an inventor. And she has lots of ideas of things that she wants to invent, but she's currently focused on a hover car. And I have to tell you that I tend to be a bit of a realist. And this is part of the reason I want to help my kids be dreamers, because I can always start thinking of like the reason something can't work. And so when she talks through the details of her invention, sometimes my gut is to shoot them down or explain because, you know, I have more life experience why that idea is not going to work. But after our New Year's dream conversation, I really focused on encouraging her to think about that hover car invention and to think through ideas and challenges she may face and focus on problem solving and be open to the fact that a different or new idea may come her way down the road. I still don't think we need a hover car, but maybe she's going to prove me wrong. What do I know? So as the year took off, I focused on eagerly listening to her ideas as they evolve. And as this year's coming to an end, I got to tell you, she is still focused on wanting to invent some sort of hover car that doesn't need wheels. But the reason I know that the encouragement to keep dreaming about her invention is working is because she talks about it a lot. And she has started to find things that won't work in her idea. Like she learned something new and it makes her realize, well, that part of my idea is not going to work. I'm going to have to come up with something new. And she's thinking about a lot. She shared her ideas with her babysitters and she's talked to other adults in her life who she thinks will be interested. And I know this because they come back to me and say, have you heard about Addison's focus on building this hover car and her dream about doing this and the ideas she has? And so they're eager to report back to me and they're kind of impressed with how seriously she has thought about this. And I am so here for it. And I'm always anxious for what her next idea will be. She has lots of ideas, but this hover car one is a big focus of hers. So it's something we wrote down. It's something that I'm having to work on myself to not just shut down her ideas, which makes me sound terrible, but to just encourage her to keep thinking about it. Sometimes I may point out, well, do you think this would work or this would happen? But I'm loving seeing her focus on this because I think, man, if I can encourage this at the end of the day, I think she will invent something, which would be amazing. So as we head into 2023, we will have another family conversation about our 2022 dreams and our dreams for the new year. So what did we accomplish last year? What's still in the works and a dream that we want to keep on this dream page? Have we grown or shifted away from anything on the list? What's new that has come up over this past year that we want to add to the list? I cannot wait to hear what they want to add in 2023. 
So I would love to hear if you help your kids with New Year's resolutions or talk about their hopes or dreams as they enter a new year. Or is there something that you did as a child that your parents did with you to ring in a new year that you do with your kids or you plan to do with your little ones as they get older? I love to hear about these ideas. It's picking up on other people's ideas that has allowed me to come up with kind of fine tuning how we want to approach things like this with my kids. So if you have an example of how you've approached it in the past, how your parents approached it with you or how you plan to approach it, shoot me a DM on Instagram. My handle is at sleep and wellness coach. Thanks for joining me again this week. Cheers to a joyful holiday break with your children. If you're getting one, I hope you'll come back again next week. Bye for now. Thank you for listening to How Long Till Bedtime. To learn how we can work together to improve your child's sleep, please visit sleepandwellnesscoach.com.